Hey dolls! Alright, so I am going to touch up my roots, and a lot of you have been asking me how I touch up my roots, why I touch up my roots, etc. So, um, I am naturally blonde, but it is a kind of dirty dishwater blonde, so unfortunately my roots aren't light enough for the pink to be able to show up well. I need to have it like platinum bleach bleach blonde, so I do unfortunately have to lighten my roots. Um, and back when I did my hair dark, back when I had black hair, I used the same dye except it was in like the black shade or like the really, really dark brown shade. So that's a similar process to what I'm going to be showing you here in case you were curious how I used to do my roots when I had dark hair. But anyway, yes, it is time to do my roots. And what I like to do is I like to lighten my roots or quote unquote bleach them one night and then kind of give my hair a break overnight and then I will do the pink the following day and that kind of helps as far as dyeing my hair because it breaks things up and I don't have to spend like five or six straight hours doing my hair it kind of gives me a little bit of a break in between and then I can just pick up the next day and then finish that off so basically what I do is I use this dye right here and I use it exactly how it says to in the package. I'll go through and show you guys step by step what I do. However, I do want to add a disclaimer. I am by no means a professional hairstylist. I'm aware that some of the things that I do in my hair routine is quote unquote wrong and you should not do it. But this is my personal experience. Don't do what I do and then question why your hair got fried. I'm just sharing with you my experience. This is not a how-to tutorial. It's just a little video showing how I personally do things. So if you want to get mad at me in the comments and say I'm doing something wrong or I'm not supposed to do something a certain way, feel free to. I totally understand that. This is just what has worked for me and what I prefer doing, especially at home and on a budget. This is the dye that I use to lighten my hair. It is the Revlon Color Silk in the shade Ultra Light Sun Blonde. And it just looks like this. It comes with these two bottles. This one right here, this is the main squeezy bottle that you will use to put the product on your hair. And then it also comes with this little mini bottle right here. And you pour this into here, shake the crap out of it, and then snip the cap off. And then you're ready to use it pretty much. So there is that. Also, the package does come with this conditioner. However, when I do my pink, it says on the Arctic Fox pink hair dye that you should not condition or shampoo your hair, I believe. It's either a condition or shampoo. I think it's condition. You should not condition your hair before you apply the Arctic Fox. Back when I had my dark hair, this right here that came in the brown or black package was honestly my favorite conditioner in the entire planet. It smells so good and I love how it ha how it leaves my hair feeling so soft and nice. However, I don't use these anymore. These ones for the blonde ones, I just give these to my mom because I don't use these. I don't want to put this conditioner in my hair because otherwise my Arctic Fox hair dye won't have anything really to grip onto and the product itself will just slip off my hair. Again, I could be completely into wrong. It might work out fine. I've never tried it, but that's just my personal preference. I don't use these little packets anymore. I give them to my mom, but they used to be like my favorite conditioner of all time back when I did use this dye to uh, darken my roots or touch up my roots when I had dark hair. And then also in the package, it does come with these flimsy gloves that are 10 sizes too big for me. So I got on the trusty eBay and ordered some pink gloves. These are the powder free and I think latex free ones. I'm not 100% sure. They work just fine for me. I use these for both this dye as well as the Arctic Fox one. And yeah, they're great. So I'm going to be using those that you'll see. And then I just got this little hair dyeing brush. I need to get a new one. I just told my mom that it's on my Christmas list for new hair dye brushes because this one has seen some days. 
This one I just got at Sally's Beauty. You can get them all over the place for a very inexpensive cost. And then these little hair clips I use to separate my hair that I got at Dollar Tree. So easy peasy on a budget. And this hair dye you can find at Walgreens, Walmart, Fred Meyer, if you have a local Fred Meyer, um, various different stores like that. And it's literally like $3, I think, for this box of dye, which is super awesome for me because it does the job perfectly. And I don't have to spend tons of money on the bleach and developer and stuff like that. I can just get this. It has enough in it to just do my roots and I am good to go. So, yes, I am going to pour this little bottle into this bottle, shake it up, and then we are going to start doing my roots. Okay, so as you can see, these are my roots right now. They definitely need some help, <laughs> has quite a bit of grow out. As you can see, my hair is not naturally platinum blonde. It used to be when I was like really little, but now it is a little bit more dirty dishwater blonde. And my hair is dirty. Like I haven't washed my hair in like three or four days. So it is pretty dirty. And just a little tip, when I do have my pink hair, I only wash my hair once a week. And I know that's probably disgusting for some of you, especially if you are used to showering and washing your hair every day. But me, personally, I body shower like every day or every other day and then I will wash my actual hair once a week, which is usually on the weekends when I'm not working. And then I'll have fresh hair for the following week. And I wear my hair up at work every single day anyway. So I'm not really putting a ton of product in it or curling it or styling it or anything like that. So it can really handle going a week without being washed, without looking totally grungy. Right now it looks a little grungy because I have been putting product in it because I have been home and I've been able to kind of style it here and there. But yeah, so the first thing that I'm going to do is part my hair. And I like to do three parts. And again, this is by no means 100% professional, okay? This is just what works for me. Also, sorry if my lighting is weird. I'm in my bathroom and we don't have like, it literally looks like my foundation is 10 times darker than my arm. Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> this light definitely shows it though. Hey, it's Amanda from the future. Same day, just a few hours later. This is what my roots look like right now, but I really wanted to address something. I am re-watching the footage back right now, and oh my gosh, my foundation seriously looks 10 shades darker than what it really is in that lighting. I don't know what the heck that lighting did, but I could not tell that in the viewfinders. So I'm sorry if you were yelling at me the whole time while I was doing my face and it was super cringe, or not doing my face, doing my hair and it was super cringy. I'm sorry, but you can clearly see this is the exact same day and this is just different lighting. I don't know what the heck happened in that bathroom, but it's not near as bad as what it looks like in that bathroom. I'm sorry. Don't hate me. Okay. I'm gonna shut up now, back onto the video. Anyway, so I like to part my hair into three sections. I like to put my hair basically in pigtails and then I will keep a back section. So it's something kind of like this. So like these two sections and then this section right here. I could use this or like a rat tail comb and like section and part my hair perfectly or have someone do it for me. But this is this works for me and I don't mind it, so it's what I'm gonna do. Here's my back one. I'm just going to twist and then wrap it around itself. And then take one of these clips and boom, clip it in place just like that. Easy peasy. And then I'm gonna take one of the side ones. Again, don't you love like my beautiful job with this? It's just so professional. Twisting the side, wrapping, wrapping it around itself, grabbing a clip, and clipping it in place. Beautiful! And I use this exact same process when I do the pink later on. So taking my little squeezy bottle, I just basically start top and work down. Again, this is just how I do this. I know it's not the best way, I know it's not by the book, but it works for me. So. Uh, Get ready to cringe, because here we go. So I just layer on the dye like so. I brush it to one side of my hair. I brush it to the other side of the hair. Sometimes if I feel like one side needs more than the other, or I didn't apply enough, I will apply more. 
and again one side and the other side and then once I have the part like that and I've coated both sides I will take the rat tail of the brush and I will kind of part this with a little section just about like so flip it over and then do the exact same thing just layer that on there brush it to the underside of where I just parted and brush the side on the top and then we just go through and repeat this 800,000 times until we are done with this section okay so as you can see here is the progress that I've made so far you can see it is already lighting lightning and I just have this bottom section left so I literally have just been doing the exact same thing and just applying some of the dye this part gets kind of tricky because you can't really see behind you so much but after you do it many times you kind of get used to it <laughs> You can see how bad the roots are right there, definitely. But, yep, just sectioning and painting. See, I would look really cute with like a side shave, but uh, I don't, I can't. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> People have always told me like, oh, you look so cute with a shave side, side like side shave. And I'm like, I know, but I don't want to. <laughs> When I do the back, this is literally what I do. I just like feel where the part is or like where I need to place the product. I squeeze on a little bit more than necessary. And then I start just putting it all over. Just like that. And sometimes I'll even use my fingers and kind of just like massage it just a little bit. And if I do get the dye on like the ends of my hair, I'm not worried about it because when I do my pink, I literally saturate my whole head anyway. So if I do get it throughout, it's not that big of a deal for me. But as you can see, this actually strips away or lightens the pink as well. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and work on this section now. And before I work on that section, I'm going to take the clip that I had placing, that I kept had on this side keeping it in place. Bleh, cannot speak. I'm just going to take it and section this side off. Now I can do the exact same process on this side. Alright, so I just finished up this side now. As you can see, definitely brightening up even more. So now what I'm going to do is take my clip from, you guessed it, the back, and twist up this section and as you can see, I did kind of do these sections right here. I don't know if you can really tell, but I did do those sections a little bit as I was doing the other sides right here. I kind of just layered it on really thick, as I mentioned before, and I did that. So now we're just dealing with this little tail here. Layer on this die. Use my brush, brush it around kind of section it a little as I go and then I use my fingers and kind of further massage that into the root itself. Don't massage into your scalp but massage onto the base of the hair. That's what I do. And then the next section just do a little line where I can kind of feel that that part is and then Blend that out with your little brush. Feel with the brush to part it. That feels about right to me. Layer it on. I can't even see how much I'm applying, so I over apply because I'd rather over saturate, saturate the area than not get it all because I know that this is really awkward and weird every time I do it because I can't see anything 
Once I do finish the back though, I will take a handheld mirror and I will stand with my back facing the main mirror and then I will hold the handheld mirror facing the mirror behind me and I will kind of look and see if there's any touch-ups that I need to make and I'll do the exact same process with the pink as well. Now here's an example of what I was showing you. Pretend you are the mirror and as you can see, if I hold this mirror a certain way, I can kind of look and see the camera and check and make sure that everything has been properly coated. The directions say 25 minutes. I like to leave it in my hair for about 30 to possibly 40, really all depending. I check it every once in a while just to make sure that it's doing good. Once my hair is all done, I will take and accumulate everything all at the top of my head just like this and I will just do a one two I do a loose bun because I want the product to be able to kind of breathe underneath of the bun but um yeah this looks a little hot mess kind of looks like a mustard on my hair or something but it's doing its job it's working now at this point a lot of people if you watch these kinds of videos on youtube about dyeing hair and things like that a lot of people will take a plastic bag or a shower cap or something and put it over your hair i do not like doing that when it is like light colored stuff. I'll do it when I use my Arctic Fox dye. I did it when I used my dark colored dye years ago, but when it's blonde and you're basically putting bleach in your hair, you don't want to make the product like any hotter than it already is because you'll feel like the sensation on your scalp getting warm. And if you add the bag to it, it's going to keep all of that heat in and get hotter. That's the mistake that a lot of people make frying their hair, as far as I know, is they do the bleach and then they put the bag on top or the shower cap on top and then it keeps all of the heat in. And that's great, that's processing your hair, it's lightening it, awesome. But at the same time, you're frying your head. <laughs> So at this point, I just like to let it be able to breathe and it works just fine for me. Again, every hair texture, everybody is going to react to a product a different way. So you guys may not have the same reactions that I have with this exact box dye or anything like that. So please, please, please have fair warning. Do not do what I am doing and be surprised if you fry your hair or if something goes wrong because this is just what works for me. This is what works for my hair type. This is what works for my hair style, color, etc. So just, I am not a professional. I'm just putting this huge disclaimer in here. I'm just sharing with you guys my process. This is not a tutorial, okay? I'm gonna let this sit on my head. I need to set a timer for 25 minutes now because I've probably been talking for five or 10. And um, once it's done, I will just hop in the shower and I will just rinse this out using hot water and I will not shampoo or condition my hair. And then I let my hair completely air dry overnight. I do not put any heat on it or anything because I am using such a light bleach style dye that I don't want to add extra heat to my hair any more than I already have to. So I just let it air dry tonight and then I will add my Arctic Fox tomorrow, which I will catch up with you guys then. All right, so it is the following day and I am ready to do my pink. So for my pink, I use Arctic Fox Virgin Pink and Arctic Fox Electric Paradise. The reason I started mixing the two rather than just using straight Virgin Pink is because Virgin Pink, as you can see, has somewhat of a really purple hue to it. So to kind of balance that out and counteract it, I add Electric Paradise, which you will see in a second is more of a pink pink rather than like a purpley fuchsia pink. Uh, so I do add these one part Arctic Fox, one part Electric Paradise. I just do them half and half, mix them up in this little Cool Whip bowl, and then I'm ready to start applying. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. You can see it looks more orange, but once it is mixed with the uh, virgin pink, it is not near this orange. 
this amount isn't enough for my whole head. I do actually have to go in and do this a second time in the middle of my hair dye process, but that's totally fine because it works for me. And I like to saturate my whole head when I do this, not just my roots. So it just kind of refreshes up the rest of the hair as well as the roots that I just lightened. But as you can see, before I apply it to my head, this does not at all look like my hair color or even the color that is on the bottle. But once it is mixed together and it is on the head, it is very beautiful and I love it. So I just use my little brush here and mix this completely together and as you can see it makes a really weird like maroon color this is not at all how it looks once it's done obviously you guys have seen my hair a thousand times this is just what it looks like fresh out of the bottle mixed together and the reason it looks like this is because the electric paradise looks so orange even though it is a pink shade it's very strange but this is what we're working with looks kind of like ketchup and we're gonna start putting it on my hair using the exact same process we did yesterday for the blonde so here are what my roots are looking like from yesterday also side note i did put on a different foundation but like we're not having problems like we were yesterday i also didn't contour as heavily so maybe that has to do with it I have no idea, but I'm gonna go through and part my hair the exact same way as I did yesterday. And we're just gonna start applying the pink exactly how I did the dye yesterday. Just kind of self-explanatory. So I'm not gonna show this entire part because we literally just did it all a minute ago in this video. So you guys get the gist. I'm basically gonna do most of all of this off camera. So yeah, I will be back. I did wanna mention that, well, number one, this is how I did my hair, yay, same as yesterday. But I did wanna mention that the one thing that I do differently when I do the pink, while I am going through each one of these little sections after I part it, I will take some of the dye and put it on and then just kind of like pull it through and like massage it just a little and then I will put it to the side, then I will do the next section, paint it on the roots just like I did before and then I will do it throughout the rest of the hair as well. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that real quick before I got started. So you guys kind of had an idea of how I did that. I also almost just forgot a very, very critical step, and that is actually framing my face with basic regular conditioner. I do this so that the dye doesn't actually color my skin itself. I'm just using a basic Tresemme white conditioner. What I'm going to do is take a little bit of the conditioner and apply it to just around my face, the nape of my neck, and places that I don't want the dye to stain so much because this stuff is very stain worthy. <laughs> so I'm just taking a little bit like this. Don't need a lot at all whatsoever. And then I'm just going to go around my hair line just like this, down around on my ears. And this is great because this just washes right off in the shower when you're rinsing the dye out. Now I can go ahead and get started doing the color. I also did wanna mention that obviously I don't have a squeezy bottle for this dye, so I literally just coat the brush and then start painting it on. So, yep, here we go. Ta-da! Okay, so I have done and saturated my whole head. I just did a nice little ballerina turn. Um, the thing I love most about Arctic Fox is there's no peroxide, no ammonia, no alcohol, no PPD, no things like that. It has added conditioner in it, so while it's in your hair, it's actually helping your hair rather than harming your hair, which I like I said, that's one thing that I really, really love about them. So what I personally do is leave this on my head for an hour to an hour and a half. And it says on the bottle, the actual directions say, um, leave color on hair for 30 minutes or longer for best results. Cover hair with a plastic cap, which I mentioned earlier, and process with heat, blow dry up to 15 minutes. And then once you rinse it out, you'll rinse it out with cold water. <laughs> I know that's the part that sucks for a lot of people with colored hair like this is cold showers. But just a little quick tip for maintaining my hair. I add some of the dye to my conditioner in a separate bottle. 
And then after I get done shampooing my hair, I just add the conditioner, let it sit, I'll wash my body, I'll shave my leg, my hair is ready to wash out, and it just kind of replenishes and brings vibrance back to the color. This is it. We're going to leave it for an hour. I'm going to shower, <laughs> and then we'll be done. And ta-da! My hair is all revamped and gorgeous. And yeah, I'm not going to talk too much because this is like a really, really long video. But yep, this is what my roots look like now. Now that everything is all said and done and they are all beautiful now. But yes, I hope this video was a little bit informative and answered some questions that you guys may have about my roots and the process in which I touch them up. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will talk to you all in my next one. So until then, so long, stay strong, stay true, and be you. All right.